On a random Sunday in October, we have witnessed history. The death of 3 for 3 Industries and the smelly carcass of the developer has now been reborn to Halo Studios. And the internet is pretty much ablaze, ranging from the Halo content creators to massive YouTubers like Angry Joe and Moist Critical, everyone is reacting to this massive news. Some people are creaming their pants over the news while others are taking a more measured approach and unsure if this really changes anything. Halo has been through quite a bit in the last decade and pretty much the entire fan base has been at each other's throats throughout the entire process. Does this news symbolize a new dawn of the franchise or is this just putting a fresh coat of paint on a giant turd. Let's gaze upon the graphics of the Unreal Engine, hope Halo Studios can create a finished game, and jump right into this. So to have a quick rundown of the update itself, right before the final match at the Halo Championship, we had a studio update announcement where dudes like Pierre Hintz, the head of Halo, the man that relatively has been quiet this entire time, I honestly don't even remember what his voice sounded like before this, came forward to discuss what the future would look like. So once they started the video discussing the future of the studio, we saw a clip showing a new dawn, symbolic of what this change will look like for the studio. And I will jump into the various images and news they drop throughout the video itself, but I want to start with the new name, Halo Studios. It's so simple, yet fitting. I think we can look at the studio name in a few ways. Firstly, you can say that, well, at least you know the studio is your Halo developer, which shows their dedication to the IP. You won't see Halo Studios making a Minecraft IP. It has this sense of, we're here to make Halo games, and we have a kind of love for the franchise itself. Not just from the devs working at the studio, but but also from Microsoft. I mean, in the last few years, you heard quite a bit of the slander that has been thrown at the franchise where people were calling Halo the ugly bastard child of Microsoft that was left to the side while games like Starfield were being elevated to be the new face of the company. Well, that idea kind of died quickly, didn't it? But what this does tell me is that Microsoft is giving investment to the franchise that built this damn company. As a longtime Halo fan, it gives me hope but also confusion as into wondering why this was even a question. The plural in studios confirms that this will be a culmination of several developers together being used to make Halo games. I mean, this was confirmed directly in the update that there were several Halo projects in development. And you wanna know what's wild? I actually called for this to happen several times in my last Halo videos. This franchise is so vast that there shouldn't just be one developer making the game. Let's pump more games out there, more Halo, the better. I mean, when was the last time you heard of a name change building this much excitement? At the same time, you will hear most skeptics tell you, well, isn't it just the same team with a new name? And as much as the memes have been pretty hilarious so far, if you really think about it, how many of the old regime are still there? Bonnie Ross is gone, Frank O'Connor is Audi, Kiki Wolfkill is making movies and TV shows for Microsoft, which is a giant mistake, but it's almost like that Walking Dead picture where all those main characters are essentially dead. They've axed everybody that's been causing us our headaches this entire time. The core trio have been replaced and even most of the devs have either been cut or a brand new guard has entered the fray. And because of the negative stigma of the name 3 for 3 Industries, which is essentially crap, it honestly makes perfect sense for them to want to change names. It was once the epitome of the instability of a game being released and essentially never actually following through any of your promises so at least now they have a brand new look even though i'd much rather have a better logo but hey it's, it's i guess it's not the worst the next aspect that really took me by surprise or at least caught me off guard was the amazing visuals that were shown off in the video chris matthews which is the studio art director had outlined their new project foundry and essentially what this project is is that they want to test out the unreal engines tools and mechanics to create a world that Halo could be played in. And it honestly looks amazing. Obviously, we all know the Unreal Engine 5 has a lot of ability. There's several games out there that show off the graphical fidelity and the look that is so realistic that it honestly is breathtaking at times. And we all know that Halo has been built on this idea of these vast environments that with many different types of biomes. And they kind of showed off what could be possible if using the Unreal Engine in the Halo universe. Whether it was the greenery we saw in the Northwest Pacific territories, the snowy biomes, or even the blight or that blood infested arena. I mean, everything looks fantastic. And I like the idea that Halo was always known as that game that pushed the boundaries of what was capable of any graphical feat, meaning that they set the standard and a lot of other games mirrored that. And I think it's kind of hilarious that they used Halo CE models for the characters like Master Chief and the Elites 
and they still want us to believe that there's not a Halo CE remake in the works. It's kind of hilarious, but I mean, it's kind of confirmed now. And if this is true of what they're showing us, what can be done in the Unreal Engine, I mean, sign me up. But at the same time, I'm one of those people who, since the beginning of this news being broken, I have been a little weary about the Unreal Engine because there are still issues, even if it's amazing and it's graphical fidelity, have a lot of problems they have to address. One of the big problems is on the PC, there's a lot of stuttering when it comes to the FPS. And especially because Halo is a multiplayer game or just a shooter in general, FPS means so much when it comes to the game to game feel of the title. Sure, if you're trying to make a grand open world that is a story based game where FPS may not matter, then that's one thing. But how many FPS games on the Unreal Engine 5 have been amazingly smooth and crisp on all platforms. I haven't seen enough of it to really confirm that. And I mentioned this a long time ago, but the problem of using Unreal Engine is that you're kind of drifting away from what was used for the entirety of the Halo franchise. As much as the Slipspace engine is a barrel of crap, it was essentially the Blam engine that was updated over the years to kind of continue being used on future games. And the Blam engine was the same engine that was used originally for Halo games like Halo 2 and Halo 3, which is why when Halo Infinite had created this brand new engine, it felt like a Halo 3 game, just an updated version of one. The problem with doing this though, is that it caused a lot of people to have to learn how to make or create content using Blam rather than just making things for the game. You had to teach people that were hired as contractors because of the stupid policy that Microsoft uses and it took them roughly six months to learn how to use the engine and that was long enough to cause disruptions in the game and what this proves to me is that maybe it might be better off not making a future Halo game as an open world experience because it could maybe hurt the overall feel of this games now being made on the Unreal Engine. Like Unreal has so many great things that make it potentially an awesome engine to use for Halo going forward, but at the same time, it could also be a disaster. People are always so ready to jump on the boat if they see a game that looks fantastic on what it's capable of doing when it comes to its graphics. Graphics aren't everything. The gameplay feel is extremely important. And imagine playing a Halo game that doesn't really feel like Halo. Do you know how bad that would be? I, don't, I wouldn't be a and one of the biggest things they mentioned in this update was that there's going to be a new method in making games for the future of Halo. And the biggest thing I noticed was the fact that they said several Halo projects were in development, and it seems like Halo Studios will be multiple groups working on games at the same time. And one of the biggest lines I felt like was really important was the COO, Elizabeth Van Wick, saying that when they were making Halo Infinite, they were in a really tough spot. They had to act as if they were a tech company updating the engine of Halo, the Blam engine or the Slipspace engine, while also trying to be a game company actually making content. And throughout this video, they kind of made the idea of, well, Halo Infinite is going to be the last of this old recipe in which game development was made for the franchise. And now going forward, we're going to have a brand new method. And it kind of tells you a few things. Firstly, the Unreal Engine will make life a lot easier for these devs to make games quicker because now the Unreal Engine is a common tool mo used by most games in this industry. So there's going to be a lot more devs that have experience using Unreal Engine rather than having to learn to use a brand new engine that was created by 343 Industries. And this also tells me that they might be trying to outsource projects to other studios instead of relying only on Halo Studios to make one game at a time, which is something that was rumored a little while ago but it kind of feels like it might end up being confirmed sooner rather than later. I mean, I'm not against Halo Studios making one Halo game and then ushering out other devs from other groups to start working on other titles. I'm not against that at all because it just means you get to have more Halo and now more people on deck that can help make these projects. And I think what's hilarious is that they kind of cracked on the old method. This is like I'm, some major shade was being thrown at 3 for 3. The problem with this cryptic saying of, you know, we're going to ditch the old method and bring a new one in, it kind of tells me a mixture of things, or at least doesn't tell me the full truth. Like, what do you mean by that? Does this mean that maybe there's going to be a campaign only game and a multiplayer only game? Does this mean that maybe instead of doing the three for three method of having two separate teams not really work together when it should be a full team project? Are we going to have different developers have a completely different outlook of what the story could be going forward? Or this could be simply put that now we're actually working on multiple Halo games instead of just one. The bottom line is nobody knows what that actually means because it's a cryptic phrase 
that was thrown in there. You would almost hope that Peter Hintz could actually like tell us what the hell he means by that. Because if I'm looking at the old method of what 3 for 3 Industries had done after they took over from Bungie, is they just were inconsistent with what the fans had wanted. It felt like they changed their minds on the pathway of what they wanted to make Halo going forward. There's a lot of rumors that the devs over at 3 for 3 didn't really love Halo in general, and that they essentially were just set to make Halo games, and they didn't really know how they wanted to do that because they wanted to create their own vision. So you have Halo 4, which became a COD clone, a bad version of one. Halo 5 became a Titanfall clone with a horrendous story. And finally, Halo Infinite seems to be going in the right direction because it felt more like a Halo 3 copy. But the problem is it had zero content at launch, so the entire fan base basically dropped after two months. And only a year and a half later did we finally get to see what Halo Infinite could have been if content was prepared way earlier. We actually felt like Halo Infinite became a full game. But by that point, most of the fans had kind of ditched it because... Why would you wait long unless you're a fan like me that plays all the time? So when Halo Studios says that they recognize the old method was flawed and that they're switching to something new, I do believe them. As a Halo fan, I just want a game that is keeping up with what the originals had intended for the art style, a good story, and a fun game to play. So if this new method does that, then sign me up. So what the hell does this mean for Halo going forward? You can look at this at several different perspectives. You can think of this with the ultra fanboy hopium filled side. We have a new name, hype is back, Halo will forever be changed, instant win for the studio, they can hit nothing but net, Halo CE remake is the greatest thing that will ever release in the next 10 years, all that bullshit and all too much hopium. And as long as it says the word Halo on it, then it's automatically good. Or you can be the pessimist and say that no matter what, Halo is dead. Just because they change their name doesn't mean the product will be good and stay as trash. I've even seen people criticize the look of Master Chief and say that his armor was not dirty enough or worn down, and it shows that the failed vision of the devs is still consistent. Like, dude, this is a tech demo. People are already crapping on the look of it, and the game hasn't even released, it hasn't even been announced. Or, to be honest, you could be like me. Hopeful, yet afraid. As a longtime Halo fan, I've seen this game grow through a whole lot of shit over the years. Whether it was internally from the devs coming up with some really bad and dumb ideas, or externally from the fan base that loved to punch themselves in the nutsack for being extremely over the top in either direction. And sure, it's not all Halo fans, but there is a good amount of them that do get too crazed. I look at this moment and say, all right, guys, clean slate. You washed the gross taste out of my mouth and rebranded to give off the impression of being a brand new team. So here's your chance to show us what you're actually capable of doing. It was the same way I treated 3 for 3 Industries when they first announced that Halo 4 was in the works. So it's the same treatment I'm gonna give you now. I like to see Halo finally be given the attention that it deserves. And it proves me right that even with all the bullshit people spew, saying that the Halo franchise is dead and no one cares, it only took one tech preview to get everyone to lose their minds. That's called power. Maybe Microsoft listened to the fans and invested their time and money into the franchise that is considered the backbone of the brand of Xbox. Or maybe they're going to kneecap the games by making them into hero shooters. Or worse, reboot the series. The bottom line is, we don't know. And as much as I can worry about what will happen in the future, I still have some hope that Halo Studios will deliver on a great Halo game. I guess we'll find out when we get there. But one thing I will say is this, doesn't it feel good to know that Halo will be around for years to come it sure as hell does if you want to know my opinion about the future of halo franchise i made a few videos of what i want to see in the future of the halos campaign and multiplayer check out the videos in the end screen until next time this is marsman signing off game on